Hey guys, Phil here at Woods Tree Farm. Today's video is kind of a mistake. I wasn't going to do a video of this because all I was planning on doing was taking the blades off and sharpening them up. But here's what happened. I hit a piece of rebar out at the farm, really mangled up one of my blades, and I was able to get a decent edge back on it. But in the process, I realized that I damaged one of the spindles on the mower. And up to this point in having the mower for the last year or so, I'd never took the deck off before. I was a little intimidated with, uh, you know, the whole deck contraption and the belt and the way that it's serpentine and all the pulleys and I was just not wanting to worry about having to get that back on there the right way. Well, I overcame that fear and decided to you know take the deck off. In the process, I realized there was a whole lot of dirt and grass uh, stuck up underneath the deck. There was a lot of grass on top of the deck, so I cleaned all that off. I managed to get two five gallon buckets full of debris off of the top and bottom of the deck and also in the process i realized that there's quite a bit of corrosion you can see it right there so uh got online looked at uh, what to do about that and i came up with fluid film as a solution so this is a, an eco-friendly landlin lanolin based lubricant and this uh, says right on the bottle that it can be applied over tightly adhering rust dry or damp metal surfaces so i have gone over this i uh, obviously scraped all the dirt and debris and grass clippings out of there i used a wire brush to loosen up any of the loose rust that's on the surface of the top and bottom of the mower and then i scrubbed over the whole thing with a regular um, automotive type cleaner and you know rinsed it off let it dry out completely and now i'm going to spray this on so uh Hoping that a little bit of preventative maintenance here will help this last a little longer. I didn't realize there was as much corrosion on this deck as there is. So I'm gonna spray this on. We'll see what it looks like after I spray it on. On the top side of the deck here, all of this abrasion here was from this spring which usually this pulley is all the way around this side just because i have it standing up it looks a little weird but this spring attaches to this pulley and um, keeps tension on the belt and uh, it was just creating a whole lot of rubbing right here so i'm going to spray it down and then i'm also going to make a rubber sleeve for this spring and hoping that that keeps uh that wear on that spot of the deck down to a minimum of a time. Well, here's the spindle that I had to take off and what caught my attention when this was bolted onto the deck, I noticed that the blade on one side of the deck was a little bit lower than the blade on the other side of the deck. I could tell where the blade was relative to the side of the deck and it looked like it was a little bit lower. And knowing that I had just done a few weeks ago, I filmed a video where I showed how I leveled the deck. Um, I was thinking about how that those two blades being different heights would impact how the deck needs to be leveled. But then I realized, you know, they really shouldn't be different heights. Why would that be? So I went and, uh, you know, kind of yanked on each of the pulleys and yanked on each of the blades to see if he, any of them had play. And this one definitely does. So you can see that there. I've already taken this whole thing apart. I've taken the bearings out. I've done everything that I think I can do to try to tighten this up, but there's really nothing here. I think it's just damaged. So that play does not come out. The other two spindles on the mower does not have that same kind of play. And there's also a little bit, if you listen, it's a little bit of side to side play in that as well. So uh, I think if, uh, if I go ahead and order up a new spindle, that uh, I'll get something that's nice and tight and it'll end up being at the exact same height as the other blades on the mower. All right, so there's the mower in pieces. There's the deck over there. Now all I've got to do is just wait a couple days for that new spindle to get here. So, see you in a couple days. All right, so now the replacement part has come in from Amazon. Let's see and let's hope it's the right piece and it's a direct match for what I need. Uh, I ended up ordering a, an aftermarket part try to save a few dollars. The exact replacement on Amazon was like 78 bucks and this one was 42. So let's hope that was a good decision. 
right? We got a box in the box. Came with hardware too, that's nice. And the holes are threaded. So a lot of these that you, you order online, the mounting holes aren't threaded. So you either need to tap them or you need to use self-tapping hardware. Uh, these are threaded. I'll put a link to this product down in the description. But I can already tell you, the bearings on that feel super smooth compared to the one that came off there. So um, I feel good about it so far. The, let's put these side by side. Here's the original one. Here's the aftermarket. Okay, put them this way side by side. Everything matches up from the from the looks of it here. The spindle's the same length. The pulleys are the same size. So, all good. I also found out when ordering these that uh, these spindles that come on this mower even though this is what almost four thousand dollar mower these are the exact same spindles that are used on a whole bunch of cheaper mowers including those from mtd craftsman toro no not toro troy belt and a few others because they're all made by mtd including this uh this cub cadet here so you know if you're looking for a mower that you're going to be hard on this is one of the pieces that takes the biggest beating and you know just know that this is not a serviceable unit there's no grease fitting there's just steel bearings in here and apparently if you hit a piece of rebar you're gonna mangle one of these pretty easily uh so that's not to say a heavier duty unit you wouldn't mangle either um you know nothing's really made to hold up to rebar i don't think but point being you think you're getting a really high quality mower but some of the components are the same thing as shared with like fifteen hundred dollar riding mowers I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera, but that spray film that I put on here, I thought it'd be dry. I put it on there yesterday, and it's definitely left a greasy film on here. I thought it would leave kind of like a dry, non-stick film, but, you know, whatever. Really curious to see how it holds up. I think what we'll probably have to do, if this is going to stay wet like this, I'm pretty confident it's just going to kind of wipe off with use, or wear off with use. And what we'll probably have to do off-season, come back here, uh, blast all the rust off, do a good primer on the underside, and then put something like that nonstick coating on there. Uh, what we're going to do now is mount up the spindle, use the hardware that came with it. Okay, now the blades, these were the mulching blades that I showed you in a previous video. I'll put a link up here if uh, you want to go back and check that out. But uh, these are the mulching blades that I got on Amazon at the beginning of the season. I think I've got about 12 hours on these, and I went ahead and used the angle grinder to reshape the edge on it. This was one of the better ones, and see how well that comes up on there. Looks pretty good. It's got a good clean edge on it now. It's a couple little nicks still in it. I didn't bother going back over this with a hand file after I did the angle grinder. I think it's acceptable the way it is, but that's the good one. The blade that hit the rebar is now a serrated blade. Look at those big chunks out of there on that side and on that side. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run these again. I routinely scalp the ground out of the farm and hit rocks and other stuff. So having a perfect edge is not my top priority and I'm not doing residential lawns with this mower. I mean, I cut my own grass at my house occasionally, but I also have a push mower here. I don't always use this mower here. So this is a farm mower, not a residential mower for me. So having a perfect blade is not a top priority, but I am curious since I don't have a lot of experience with equipment or with mower blades, what you guys think of how bad that is. Would you just replace it? Or would you try to put a new edge on there? I just took the grinder, took off all the, the high spots, got a little bit of edge inside some of these little nicks here. I'll run it again another 10 or 15 hours and hit it with the grinder again. And I think for my needs, it'll be okay. Just in case you're curious too, I did use one of these things. Sounded like
like a bell. You use one of these things to check that the blades were balanced. So if you haven't seen these, the way that they work is uh, it just, you set it down on a level surface, you put the mower blade on top, and then you just analyze whether it's leaning in one direction or another and you take some more material off of the side where it's leaning and then you get it balanced that way. So I am concerned about these blades being balanced going forward. So I'll be paying close attention to that after I get them mounted up. But according to this thing, it should be pretty close to balance. I've always wondered if it matters where the blades are positioned when you hook this thing up and I don't think it really does because these blades have no way of hitting each other. There's uh, almost a half an inch of space, maybe more, a thumb width of space in between these blades. So there's no way that they're gonna spin in here and hit each other. I think that also explains why um, we always see stragglers, you know, tall, tall pieces of grass remaining um, right at the, where the, where the blades are split, so. Um, something to keep a look at. I know some mowers have a bit of a timing where you have to make sure that they're, you know, offset like this. So when they spin around, they'll miss each other because their blade paths overlap. This one doesn't seem to do that. So I didn't realize this when I took the mower off, but uh, this bracket here that the mower hangs from is spring loaded. The manual mentioned something about this and I didn't really understand what it was talking about. So I skipped this step when I took it off. But if you use this tool that came with your mower and you put it in this hole, which lines up with that hole in the frame, right now they don't line up, that basically takes the spring tension off of these deck hanger brackets and lets you put the deck back on a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do right now real quick is just push that down. It takes a little bit of force. Push that down, push that all the way through the frame. And now this hole is pretty close to lining up with that bracket. I think if I just lift up on the deck a little bit, goes right in. Another thing to pay attention to when you're doing this is that your deck hanger pins, there are two of them that are longer than one of them. The shorter ones for the front bracket. So if you go through the work of trying to put this short one in there, you realize it doesn't go all the way through. pin should be pretty easy to get it lined up I don't know if you can see that that little curly piece needs to go down not up for it to fit just need to do it the other way because there's a bracket in the way of the pen. Yeah, not gonna be able to do that. So with the belt loose up front, I'll get it around this one. All right, with the belt on in the back, I should be able to pull the spring tension off of this pulley. Wow, that's really tighter than I thought. 
So taking the deck off is really pretty easy. I was, like I said before, pretty intimidated at first. I didn't take it off at all last year because I just thought it was more complex than it really was. You take those three pins out. Actually, before you do that, you set the height on one inch. You put this little tool that, that came with your mower in that slot on the frame, and then you take those three pins out. It's really that simple. And then to roll the, the belt off uh, was pretty easy as well. So. Um, I think for future servicing of the blades, I'll just be pulling the deck off because it's really that simple. So now I'm going to fire it up, I'm going to take it outside, and I'm going to make sure there's no weird vibrations or anything, make sure everything uh, runs the way it should. I'm not going to cut any grass tonight though because we just got that rainstorm and uh, everything's all wet and I don't want to gum up the bottom of the mower again with wet grass. So stay tuned for an update on how it cuts next time I'm out at the farm. That's all for today guys thanks for watching if you got any questions or comments leave those below if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and uh if you enjoy our channel and you want to see more stuff of what we do around our property uh hit that subscribe button yeah i'm getting tired do that hit subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye bye guys